Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. The year is 2000 and I'm rocking this gorgeous Intel Pentium 2 machine with Red Hat Linux 7. But why is that? I mean this is December, right? The month of December where YouTubers talk DOS. So what the hell am I doing here with a Linux machine? Well let me tell you. Now I have to say I've always had a thing for Linux. I mean the login prompt Excuse the Ocal host login and the password because my on-screen display of this monitor is broken and I cannot adjust the screen alignment here. But I just love the fact how everything looked complicated in Linux. I mean, searching through log files and seeing all these low-level details of the system, it was really, really impressive and it really played into my inner geek. But in this video, we are going to be talking about software. So we're not going to be looking at this gorgeous case. We're not going to be looking at the internals of the machine. So that will have to wait for another video. Because today we're going to be looking at DOS and DOS in a box, so to speak. And no, I'm not talking about that other DOS in a box. You know, the DOS box that a lot of you kids out there are using these days. Now DOSBox is a full system emulator that has its own kind of internal little DOS system. It's not a fully fledged DOS. It's primarily target for playing old games, but not necessarily old DOS applications. As it is emulating everything, it does take a performance hit, although you will probably not notice that because it's primarily used to run very old software. It can run both on Windows, on Mac, on Linux. Now DOSBox initial release was around 2003, but it gained lots of popularity around 2010. But the focus of this video is not DOSBox, but DOS Emu, a compatibility layer software package that enables DOS operating systems and application to run on a Linux based x86 PC. Released in 1993, it predates DOSBox quite a number of years. Now, to put everything into perspective, let's take a quick one-minute history lesson. Now, DOS started off in 1981 when Microsoft, together with IBM, released PC-DOS 1.0. And this was the original operating system for the IBM PC. Now, somewhat 10 years later, in 1992, graphical user interfaces started to pop up with Windows 3.1, for example, from Microsoft. But DOS was still very popular because at the very height of its popularity, around 1994, Microsoft released MS-DOS 6.22, a DOS operating system which is very popular today in the retro community. Now, around 1996, you saw a lot of open source operating systems like Linux gaining a lot of traction. But also on the DOS front, you had FreeDOS, which uh, released its first alpha release, the 0.05 release in 1997, providing an alternative for Microsoft DOS. Now, Windows 98 was kind of the last operating system from Microsoft that still featured a full MS-DOS environment. Because at around 2000, 2001, with the release of Windows XP, Microsoft kind of dropped the DOS support altogether. Now, the free DOS project still gets updates even today, and it provides an alternative operating system for DOS. So yeah, in this video, we're going to be looking at this kind of 1996 to 2000 time period where DOS emulation on a Linux environment was kind of a thing. Now to start our journey, we need to say goodbye for now to this 2000 Pentium 2 based system running Red Hat 7. Because the story actually starts with Red Hat 4.1 in 1996 when I discovered that it shipped with a DOS and a DOS X command. Now, this was pretty amazing that this was shipped with a standard Red Hat installation, but as I was executing the DOS command, nothing happened. The only thing I noticed that it was trying to access my floppy drive for some reason, but I didn't get any output. When I executed the xdos command, I noticed that it was expecting a floppy disk to be inserted. So not really having a clue what this DOS command was all about, I decided to insert my Microsoft DOS 6.22 disk into the drive, and execute the command again. And sure enough, as the computer was accessing my floppy disk, I noticed that a window appeared on my Linux desktop. And it was indeed DOS in a box. It was actually booting MS-DOS, which was on this floppy drive, into my Linux environment. And 
You know, the thing is that you have a complete DOS environment here. I have a C drive, which is mapped to my Linux home folder, so I can immediately access all files there. I can launch not only games, but I can also launch applications like this Norton Commander here. Now I have to admit, this is a very early version of DOS MU and not all applications play well with this version. Check it for example, doesn't really want to start because I'm guessing it does some low level hardware interfacing which is not supported by DOS MU. And I also noticed that certain text mode applications like this edit didn't work well in a Linux terminal. So if we want to take DOS MU to the next level, we need to swap in this machine for a more modern machine. And this is where this Pentium 2 with Red Hat 7 comes into play. Now unfortunately Red Hat 7 doesn't come with DOS MU by default, so we need to install it from the Power Tools disk. So this should be very simple, we use RPM or the Red Hat Package Manager to install the software. It's basically a one line command and it installs DOS MU and it actually works fine. We get the C prompt, so here I thought, okay, we're up and running. Now, because of the fact that in order to run games and, you know, graphic applications, you need to be able to run DOS MU in an X Windows environment. Otherwise, your, you know, graphical applications will look like this and this is not what we want. So I started up X Windows in Linux just to see how DOS in a box would look like here on this upgraded version. But unfortunately I hit a little snag here because when I started DOS in a box it said that X support is not compiled into this version of DOS MU. So what basically happened here is that they packaged a version of DOS MU without including that X support. So that's a bit of a bummer. But not to worry, I thought. I mean, I'm just going to download a newer version of DOS MU and again using the Red Hat Package Manager to install the thing. Again, a one line command. We do an RPM install of the new version of DOS MU and we should be good to go. But when I executed the DOS command, I got this segmentation fault. And this is the thing that you often get in Linux environments. I mean, there are so many dependencies, C libraries and whatnot. So you need to make sure that, you know, whatever binary you're going to install on your Linux distribution matches up completely. And obviously there was something wrong here. Now, because I couldn't find any pre-built libraries that would work on my version of Red Hat, I decided to just download the source code of DOS MU and build it myself. Because that's the type of stuff we do in Linux. So you extract the source tree, you run the configure command to prepare the actual compilation process. And you start compiling it by executing make and cross your fingers. And that's needed because oftentimes the compilation step will not work. In this case, it has something to do with some kind of switch in the GCC command that we're executing here. So I ended up fixing that. And oftentimes, you know, you need to go into make files or source files to fix certain things. And then, you know, it becomes this kind of trial and error thing where, you know, you get a couple of steps further, then you come across another error, you need to fix that error. But then ultimately you get to the end of the build and you have your binaries built. So now we're finally able to run DOS MU here because this is the first time it will prompt me for some file locations. So I'm just going to hit enter on those. And after typing yes here in this confirmation box, I was greeted with the familiar C prompt. And notice how I didn't have to insert my MS-DOS boot disk here because this version of DOS MU came with free DOS, which is a free open source version of DOS, providing you with the DOS kernel and all of the commands, fully backwards compatible with Microsoft DOS. So yeah, really uh, an excellent way to bootstrap your DOS experience in Linux. Of course, I wanted to check if the X version or DOS in a box would work now with this new compiled version, and indeed it did. So here we have it, DOS in a box. We have free DOS running. We can make uh, full advantage of the you know, graphical capabilities of running DOS in an X window like this. So we get full graphic support, meaning that you know all of these text mode graphics work fine. 
It also comes with a set of tools that allows you to easily map uh, you know, Linux drives into this DOS environment. So here I'm just going to be uh, redirecting my games folder to the E drive. So now I have access to all my games. And let's just start up Doom, for example, in this window. I'm first going to run the setup because I don't have a sound card installed on the system. So I'm just going to disable the sound for now. DOS MU does have sound support. So if you have a sound driver installed in Linux, it will pass through the sound in this DOS box without any issues. But here we have Doom running in this DOS box. It's not running super great, but it is definitely playable. Same goes for this great MS-DOS game called Stunts, which is actually running really well in this emulated way. So yeah, I can imagine that after a hard day's work, you know, uh, spending some time in the Linux terminals, compiling software, that it was nice to play an MS-DOS game from time to time. I also tried Warcraft and that also ran without any issues. Now, obviously this is going to be limited to MS-DOS games. You're not going to be running uh, Windows applications or Windows games in DOS MU, but still it's pretty nice to see these old games running in your Linux environment. But DOS MU is so much more than just fun and games because we can also do serious stuff in DOS MU. Let's take this quick basic for example here. Now this was a Microsoft quick basic integrated development environment. So we could load up our basic programs here. So I have one here, which will do, which will display some graphics. So I can compile it here from within this IDE. I can run the application. So this application here will draw a torus based on some user input. And as you can see, it's working fine. So not only are we able to compile, you know, Microsoft basic applications, but we can also run them. And it goes even further than that, because what DOS MU was typically used for back in the day was to do cross compilation. For example, I can uh, compile this application using, co using the command line as well. Now with DOS MU, I can do the same thing because DOS MU has this dumb command line switch. And what that does is it will just execute whatever DOS command you give it. It will output everything to the console and it will leave the DOS environment immediately. So here, for example, I'm just executing the dir command and I can actually pipe the output to a file on my Linux environment. And DOS MU will just load up MS-DOS, execute the command, redirect all of the output to the Linux terminal so that I can, can capture it very easily. And this kind of mechanism was used to do cross compilation because, for example, I could create like this build script here, which would just execute DOS MU in the dumb mode. I would execute some commands in DOS. And then because I have access to the file system as well, I can actually pick up an MS DOS executable from a compilation process, which was started in DOS MU. So let me just execute this build command here from my Linux terminal. It will launch DOS MU in the background. It will execute the command. It will compile my Taurus uh, basic sample. And then in the end, in my Linux terminal here on my Linux file system, I will have the Microsoft executable. So this is a really nice feature that you can kind of integrate DOS MU into existing environments. Now, one final thing I wanted to show you real quick was networking support. So I have an MS-DOS version here with MTCP installed. So it has an MTCP config file. Now, MTCP typically works with a package driver and DOS MU is kind enough to already load up a package driver in this MS-DOS environment. So what this basically means is that this MTCP configuration for those who are familiar with MTCP know that this works with a package driver and the actual tools that come with MTCP simply work. So I can get an IP address in my DOS environment. I can ping the network and all of that stuff just magically works within DOS MU. So that's pretty cool. Now I also wanted to show you that you're not only limited to running free DOS in DOS MU. So by simply uh, changing the configuration of uh, DOS MU, I can have it point to, for example, an MS DOS 6.22 installation somewhere. So it's just a matter of swapping free DOS for Microsoft DOS and you are good to go. 
you can run all of the applications which are in this MS-DOS distribution and everything seems to work pretty well. You can configure the amount of memory that you want to expose, the CPU identification that you want to expose, and lots of other stuff. And that about wraps it up. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on DOS emulation on Linux in the year 2000. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and definitely check out all of the other DOS Ember entries. I have added the playlist in the video description below, so please check them out. Stay safe, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.